Cool Afghanistan withdrawal, bro. The U.S. government is reportedly close to securing a deal with Pakistan that will ensure its ability to continue military and intelligence operations in Afghanistan, the nation where the Biden administration proudly, quote, ended a decades-long war. The Biden administration has told lawmakers that the U.S. is nearing a formalized agreement with Pakistan for use of its airspace to conduct military and intelligence operations in Afghanistan, according to three sources familiar with the details of a classified briefing with members of Congress that took place on Friday morning, reads a new report from CNN. The briefing comes as the White House is still trying to ensure that it can carry out counterterrorism operations against ISIS-K and other adversaries in Afghanistan now that there is no longer a U.S. presence on the ground for the first time in two decades after the NATO withdrawal from the country, the report reads. So, as has been obvious for months, the U.S. empire will still be retaining military control over a key geostrategic region adjacent to Iran and China, will still be enriching the military-industrial complex by raining explosives upon human beings on Afghan soil, and will still be continuing George W. Bush's war on terror scam. It just won't come with the bad cosmetics of maintaining a ground troop presence. After all the Biden administration's proud, self-filating fanfare for ending this war, it turns out it was nothing more than a slight formatting adjustment. Cool withdrawal, bro. As we discussed after Biden took office, this is the modern model of U.S. warfare, a de-emphasis on Bush-era Hulk smash ground invasions in favor of drone warfare, missile strikes, starvation sanctions, proxy wars, staged coups, special ops, and Cold War maneuverings. Constant footage of flag-draped coffins coming home during Bush's wars caused a PR nightmare for the empire, from which it still hasn't fully recovered. But technological and strategic advancements have made such bad publicity largely a thing of the past. Troops deployed overseas are now far more likely to die by their own hand than by combat. The goal of the empire is to be able to topple governments and dominate the globe without incurring a negative perception among the inhabitants of the U.S. and its client states. It has been doing this with a combination of A. Shifting to more light-touch interventionism, which doesn't garner as much negative attention as full-scale ground invasions, and B. A global perception management campaign of historically unprecedented scale and sophistication. Ideally, the imperialists want to be able to dominate the planet with economic sanctions and the occasional strategic drone strike, combined with mass-scale psychological manipulation. It is not a coincidence that nations where they are unable to do these things at will are the nations we are most aggressively propagandized against. The empire isn't getting less tyrannical, it's just getting better at public relations. The need for critical thinking and alternative perspectives has never been higher.